Hi everybody, today we're at the home of Crybaby Performance where we try and they cry. And today we're going to talk about the differences between a quarter midget and a road course indie sprint car. So if we come over to the quarter midget, the big difference is that quarter midgets have floating axles. Both front and rear are floating in space connected with a shock and a radius rod. In the back it's the same thing, you got two radius rods here. You got a shock that connects it to the chassis, and on the other side, the radius rods are much longer. So in a quarter midget, there is a ton of adjustments to make to get this car to handle on the track. First, you have your four shocks. So you have to know the compression and rebound of your shocks, and there's many different um, compression and rebound available. The next thing is the spring rates are all different. Like this is 108 spring on this side. This one's a 116 on this side. And then in the back, we have a 124. And on this side, we have a 100. You usually want the softest one in the back here so the car squats and rotates. And that's kind of how a quarter midget works. The other adjustments you can make is Quarter midgets have a rear pan hard bar to shift the axle one way or another, and they have a front pan hard bar to shift the axle one way or another. Um, the other thing is you can space out the right rear tire with the spacers that are right in there to get more or less grip. Uh, on a quarter midget, you also, on the right side, you can only run these two rim sizes with A35s if you're running asphalt. But on the left side, you can run any tire combination you want. So on the front, this is a five inch with an A35. In the back, you can run a five inch, five and a half, six inch. You have tire compounds of D20, A35, RD40, R50. So there's four different compounds, three different rim sizes. And then there's two different tire heights. You got 31 inch or 32 inch, depending on what you like for your stagger. That's another thing we have to talk about. On quarter midgets, you're always worried about stagger. The difference between this side tire and this side tire, and what is that gonna be? Three inches, three and a half inches, two and a half inches. Then on this wheel, you can run it locked. You can run it open, or you can run it on a ratchet that we talk about in another video. Then in the side over here, we have radius rod adjustments. You can put that closer together, farther apart. You also have different locations for your shocks. There's two different spuds in there, so you can run them forward or back. On the back here too, you can run this shock forward or you can run it on this side of the bird cage or you can move it to this side of the bird cage. The other thing about these cars, which is important, is the lead. So when the steering wheel, when your child is steering, if they're steering too much one way or too much the other way, you can adjust the wheelbase of the car. You can lengthen these rods or shorten these rods to adjust the axle one way or another to tune in the, uh, the track that you're running at. The other thing is you can adjust the top rod and tilt the axle forward or back to make it easier or harder to steer. Um, and again, just like the back, we have a front pan hard bar in here too, so we can shift the axle right or left if we need it. So on a quarter midget, it takes quite a few hours at the track to start figuring out the adjustments on the car. But again, you can look up your manufacturer, your car. This is an NC chassis. He does a great job. He has all the notes online for all the different cars. He has the ride heights. You set the ride heights by setting the shock heights, the shock heights control the ride heights, and um, and then he gives you all the setup notes that you need. One of these quarter midgets could take, you know, a couple hours to set them up, and, um, and then when you're at the track, you can adjust from there. So the other thing is gearing, which both Indy cars and uh, quarter midgets, both, you both have to worry about gearing on that. Uh, the Micron 2 is a super useful tool to get your RPMs right, give you information at the track. So now that we talked about the quarter midget, let's go over to the Indy Sprint Car. Here's the Indy Sprint Car, much simpler car. First off, there's no shocks and springs, so you don't have to worry about that. 
There is twist in the car though, but you can't really control that that much. You can control it a little bit by loosening and tightening the floor pan bolts or tightening up on uh, bumpers will help control that. But for the most part, we're gonna talk about the basics. So there's no shocks, no radius rods. There's really no, you know, big adjustments. The big adjustment is you can space your wheels out or in, the front wheels in or out. Then the tire sizes. You are required <clears throat> to run the same tires on both sides of the car. Uh, you can swap them from one side of the car to the other. The rear tires are one size, the front tires are another size. This one's pretty much worn out. You can see how it's cupped. These tires on the Indy Sprint cars last about three races. In quarter midgets, you're lucky to get one race out of your tires. So that's a big component when choosing a car. The next thing on these cars is they have steering adjustments just like the quarter midgets with these radius rods. And then your ride height is controlled by these spacers right here. But once you establish a ride height in a sprint car, you pretty much leave it there forever. And the steering, I mean, you don't really make any adjustments on that. The big thing you do on these cars is that you adjust the wheels in and out. Um, this car also has to have weight on it because you have to make weight. The quarter midget, you also have to make weight. And um, so we have bolted on pucks. The other thing is on the quarter midget, you adjust cross through all the shocks and you're constantly adjusting cross on the quarter midget where on an Indy cart, you're at 50% cross all the time. Doesn't matter what track you're at because you're going right and left, you're 50%. So as soon as you bolt your weight on in the correct location, your cross is set pretty much forever. Um, does have a micron just like the quarter midget and you record lap times and you change gears as well. The other nice thing about the Indy Sprint Car is it has a clutch. So what that means is it has a pull starter on it. So no push start in the cars. You basically pull start the cars which makes it a lot easier on the starts uh, and restarts. The kids can line up, they can stop on the track, the engine does not start stop running and the starts and restarts are way faster in the sprint cars. On a quarter midget, since it's locked up, the only way to start this car is to spin this wheel with your hand or push the car on the ground until it fires. And uh, we've seen a lot of worn out dads in that. So we're thankful in this form of racing that you just have a pull start. This is also an animal motor. You run animal motors in quarter midgets, so the motors are the same. The Quarter midgets have a gearbox on them though. So that's a four to one reduction gearbox where all the, the uh, sprint cars are direct drive with the clutch. So the clutch I think makes it a lot easier and um, it makes the races go by a lot faster as well. So let's see, what didn't I cover? The, um, the prices, a brand new quarter midget without the motor is $6,100. With the engine, it's another $1,000. The Sprint car, um, complete frame chassis, everything is about 3,300, and then a motor is about $500. So you're a little bit cheaper there. They both run a Micron. The Microns are the same price, $500 each. And the safety gear is about the same price. You need helmet, race suit, shoes, um, and all that. In the sprint car, a lot of people say, but yeah, but you don't have seat belts in the sprint car. And you do have seat belts in the quarter midget, and the seat belts in the quarter midgets need to be replaced every two years. You're strapped in, but you are hanging out of this side of the car. On a sprint car, you don't have a seat belt, but the seat is formed so that you can't really come out of the seat. The other thing is the center of gravity on the sprint car is so low I don't think I've ever seen a kid ejected out of a um, sprint car. Now the quarter midget, since they're tall and, and high, uh, you see cars bike over all the time, bicycle over on two wheels and then they get flipped over. The other thing is um, the tracks are quite a bit different. This is a road course car, so you're going right and left. And there's no hard barriers generally. Generally, if you take a turn wrong or you spin out, you end up going into the grass. On a quarter midget, 
all the tracks that I've ever been to have hard walls. So if you make a mistake or you get into it with another car, the quarter midgets, they run into the walls or they run into another car. And when that happens, you usually bend the axle, bend the radius rods and do quite a bit of damage to the car. Where the sprint car, this car uh, has been running all season long. We haven't replaced any spindles, radius rods, none of that sort of stuff. So when you're considering racing or you're not sure what form of racing to get into, you know, it also depends how close the track is to you. If there's a quarter midget track down the road, that may be your um, track that you wanna try. If there's a road course track down the road, that may be one you wanna try. But if you have to travel, you know, you may, or if you have a choice that you have multiple tracks in your area, then it may be wise to go to that track and check out those forms of racing. Sprint car racing is much faster. We're always done by four or five o'clock. Quarter midgets, we usually are longer drawn out races and we were usually always done at, I hate to say, uh, eight to 10 p.m., 11, 12, midnight some days. So quarter midgets take a lot more time to run their races than the sprint cars. So hopefully I've answered a lot of your questions for you new rookie families looking to get into racing and picking a car to go with. So if you liked our video, give us a thumbs up. Here at the home of Crybaby Performance, where we try and they cry.